Tengo contadas las horas Esto es mi vida, eso es toda, toda mi aurora Lo que quiero es amor yeah, yeah. Nada de compasión No, no, no lo sé Si tú sabes Que te quiero pero no lo es yeah. Hola, quiero que tú sepas que te quise amar this was our first time in Portugal. Neither of us have been here before. We rented a car, booked an Airbnb and explored Lisbon for a couple of days. So we are in Lisbon. No entiendes por qué hace tanto dolor Fueron no. errores que te marcan y cantarán Ha escrito la canción Qué pena que esto se volvió una condena Pero eso no me frena Que fueras ajena yeah, yeah. Hola, quiero que tú sepas que te quise amar After a long drive from Germany to Portugal with a small stop in France, we finally arrived at our Airbnb. Keep in mind that finding a parking spot in Lisbon can be a challenge. We found street parking right next to our house, so I guess we got lucky. Our Airbnb was close to the center. Most of the things were in a walking distance. If you have never booked an Airbnb before, then this is how the check-in process goes. Sometimes the host is going to meet you and show you around. And sometimes you will check in by yourself. So this is where we are staying actually. The street is like very uphill and downhill. and. I cannot park like that <laughs> on a slope. And now we are ready to explore our neighborhood. On our first day, we went to the Senora de Monte viewpoint. We heard it has the best view of the entire city. And in the evenings, it has the most beautiful sunset. So happy that we came here and we can see the whole top view of the city. And uh, my first reaction to this was like, I have not seen anything like this before. And I think Europe just keep uh, surprising me all the time. Next on our list was to visit Cabo da Roca, the most western point in Europe. It would take us about an hour to get there. However, we got lost. But before we get to this, let's get some coffee. So here in Portuguese, like you have to like fill the gas and pay inside the store. And uh, I think here there's like a regulation going on. Maybe only three people are allowed in the store right now. So we didn't have our morning coffee. So we thought of like stopping by the gas station and get some coffee. And I think Susie already got it. I'm not sure how we got lost because we followed our GPS, but we did. We ended up on some kind of dirt road with no end. Mm -hmm. Do you think we can go here? We ended up going a different way and let the GPS reroute us. Alright, so after driving for a couple of hours and uh, some adventures, we are here at... I think it's called Cabo de Roca. Cabo de Roca. <laughs> I think so. It's at the end of Western Europe. It's the most end. Yeah, so we have done like Florida Key West and we went to the... End of America. End of America <laughs> and now we are here at the end of the Europe. I mean, and this is like very surprising like how the, I can see the coast like the water is right there but it's so foggy like you can barely see it <laughs> it's so windy here I mean but it feels great to be at the
the the western end part of the Europe. I mean, this place, I, this place is definitely worth coming here. I mean, the wind, the breeze, the people, the smell, the nature, everything is a plus. And I was just walking around to this small trail, and I really enjoyed it. On the left hand side I have the full ocean and I think the right side there's I think a big castle that we cannot see it and that's one of the reasons we were driving and finding the ways but I'm so happy we wake up this morning and came for this adventure really fun because everything is so new to me and I have not seen anything like this before so I'm just enjoying my every single moment here after some time walking around Cabo de Roca we decided to go back while going through all these like jungle or this green place I thought there was nothing exist here but there's a very small cute town and you would not notice you would see like oh there's like no civilization here you cannot live here because all we see is just like trees and it was just like little segregated also there's like a cute cafe down there and uh, the beauty of Portugal surprised us on every step of the way but it was time for us to return to our Airbnb. We had more plans for today. We got to our place, got ready, left to explore Lisbon for the evening. So the number one thing we want to do is get find a coffee place and get some coffee, eat breakfast and then start our day. So it is Copenhagen Lab and Bakery but the one we have to go is this one, 0 0.2 miles. Because what he told me is like, there you go, um, yeah we can go by foot, 6 minutes, alright let's go. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. <laughs> Okay, one thing we noticed, I think in Spain and Portugal, like down here, everything starts a little late. So, yeah, stores are opening at, I don't know, 8, 9 in Spain, I feel like even after 9. And even though the opening hour says 9, they will still open a little later. <laughs> Hola! <laughs> Alright, so we got our coffee, huh, Susie? Yes, and it looks so pretty. I think it's the best coffee shop. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're gonna enjoy our breakfast, and I feel like this uh, Copenhagen Coffee Lab and Bakery is just like five minutes walk from us, and it's just like right next to the water. And I didn't know, surprisingly, there's like a market here. So we end up actually just like strolling around and uh, checking out some uh, uh, cool stuff over here. So uh, now we're gonna enjoy our breakfast uh, that we. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we are here at the famous Alfama neighborhood in Portugal and uh, it's right next to the ocean and uh, it's uh, like they're like small tons of tuk-tuks, tons of uh, those tiny little uh, yellow trains that you see in Portugal normally and uh, uh, from the postcards, you know, and I think I took like hundred and thousand of pictures and videos I was just like keep taking tons and tons and tons and it just looked 
so beautiful and uh, the neighborhood here is are are very very like uh, very european i mean Oh, sorry again. Oh, 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 I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, we went to the flea market this morning and uh, we just wanted to buy this uh, sunglasses for Susie. Apparently, at the flea market, the sunglasses was like 10 euros, and here the sunglasses are like 4 euros. So uh, I was just expecting the flea market would be just a little bit like cheaper, but I feel like you never know. Like, even these. Uh, Oh, I don't know what this BP. I'm not stealing anything. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but like yeah, shop around. It's not that expensive. I mean, for small stuff we needed, it was just like perfect. And it looks like that this tram is gonna take us, and we just wanna go around and see the whole neighborhood. Portugal school is called Pasto de Nara and uh, I think it's very famous here so we finally found a place they have it and here it is Obrigada Here it is It's so different What does it taste like? I think it's like a pudding filling inside Is it like spicy or sweet? It's very sweet like cinnamon or something maybe it's Okay good. Okay it's so like some Something, but it tastes great. Good, huh? Mm -hmm. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. I have to go this side. But what we learned the other day is you can go to translate and you can go to Portuguese and you can turn on the camera and, and it can translate everything in English. Can you see that? I can see it. Did it do it? Look. <laughs> Look, Yay! it's converting ham dish. <laughs> So this is how we've been like managing. Yes. <laughs> We spent our last day in Portugal mostly on the scooters trying to cover as much as possible. We paid around 8 euros for a scooter and were able to use it for 24 hours. Everyone drives here in Portugal and look at the gate. <laughs> my brother, it's perfect for my brother. Yes, yeah, Susie's brother is 6'4, so. <laughs> He's good? Yeah. <laughs> Something important here to keep in mind is to always have cash with you when crossing the tolls in Portugal. In our case, we had no cash and they don't accept cards. The receipts are in Portuguese and the websites as well. We ended up with a big email chain with the Portuguese toll company to sort out the issue in paying our toll.